Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Siriana Tarot. This is going to be a Venus conjunct Mars twin flame reading for my dearest Libras. Libra, on July 13th, today, the day I'm doing this reading, Venus and Mars aligned at 19 degrees of Leo. Now, this transit happens every two years or so, and we're going to be feeling or have been and will be feeling this energy a week on either side of the 13th. So this transit will shine down creativity, harmonize any imbalances, and activate soulmate and twin flame contracts. So when Venus, the goddess of love, and Mars, the fearless warrior, come together, we feel an awakening of the feminine and mascul masculine principles within all of us. This awakening will help shift our attitudes towards sexuality and relationships. All right, so what I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm going to read the feminine energy on the left, masculine energy on the right, and then we're going to see what's happening between you guys right in the middle. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Messages for my Libras on their twin flame journey. That one wanted to pop out present moment, so the divine feminine maybe doing a lot of prayer, a lot of meditation. I just, I was reminded of the fact that prayer is when we speak to, um, prayer is when we speak to spirit and meditation is when we listen. I love that. All right. So these kind of popped out pretty quickly. Overall energy, sexual union. Okay, Libra. So for some of you guys, you may have encountered or recognized your twin. Um, but with this morning energy, um, you guys definitely may not be together. And it looks like the divine masculine has either dipped or run, but it doesn't have to be, but it's just because they're showing me that the faint outline of the divine masculine. Um, we have love ignites. So this could have been what feels like a, a, a false start. And with this sexual union here, yep. I that's so funny. I said recognition because I feel like many of you guys, this may have been like a brief encounter or even a fleeting romance. Um, it may be something that was just meant to be a one night stand or something you weren't expecting, but there was this recognition of, whoa, what is this connection? All right. So the divine masculine, we have love ignites. So that could be the energy that he's currently in. Although you guys aren't together still, I think if you guys, this is for many of you guys who have come into physical union, um, and had, and been intimate with your counterpart, although it doesn't necessarily have to be. Okay, it could just be that there's this pull. They're showing me also the devil energy, Capricorn. So some of you are dealing with the Capricorn, that passion between you guys, that desire to have that physical union um, with someone. Um, so I do see that the masculine is being drawn to the feminine. Okay, if he's left or not, maybe you don't even know who this person is. Um, and that, yeah, the masculine here has definitely turned on his heart light. Okay, something has been ignited within. But I have a feeling he's kind of spinning his wheels. He's trying to figure out what this was. Like, whoa. The divine feminine is in the present moment. All of this passion as well. We see with this beautiful flower opening up. Something has been ignited within the feminine as well. Um, somebody's, I feel like somebody's heart, a heart chakra and sacral chakra has been blown wide open. <laughs> My guides are being kind of dirty and saying blown back. Which I do apologize, but that was kind of funny. All right. So <laughs> there's a lot of passion here within this connection. All right, my dear Libra. So let's, <laughs> I'm sorry, my guides are being goofy. Okay, so let's take a look. The Divine Feminine is in the present moment. The Empress, and out pops the Empress. Wow, Divine Feminine, look at you all in your power. There absolutely was or has been or is or will be this recognition. Some of you guys, you might be having some naughty dreams and they're not really quite naughty, are there? It's you guys coming together, okay, in that dream space. So do pay attention to, you know, any sort of, uh, that could be for healing. Um, it could just be, you know, two souls merging as one. It could be in preparation for meeting this person, reuniting with this person. But yeah, the divine masculine, his passion 
his understanding or awareness of what this was and who the divine feminine is, it's a blaze. All right, look at that. We get the world card. Some of you guys, this could be a long distance connection. Um, but there's something here that's ending. Now, for some of you guys, I did just hear if you're in a cycle of separation from your person, it may be that that separation is ending. Okay. Now, for a select few of you, this, this cycle between you guys has ended. Okay. Because I do feel for some of you, it could be a situation where it was like you guys had a one night stand and maybe you didn't even get intimate, right? Maybe it was just a meeting and it's like, whoa, what is that? Because I'm seeing this candle flame what they're showing me is like it almost going out and then coming back even bigger. So yeah, powerful energy. Some of you guys, you could be dealing with a Taurus, a Scorpio, a Leo, or an Aquarius. And again, there could be distance. But what I love about this is the Divine Feminine is learning this lesson of being present. I feel like there's this energy of meditation and prayer, carving out sacred time and space for herself. Um, and, and there's an energy with the Empress, you know, she's a, she's a, she's in this energy of waiting, um, but not putting anything on hold, but she knows that she doesn't have to work harder for somebody's love or somebody's affection. You know, she holds herself in very high regard. This is because she's been through quite a lot in love. Whoa, Divine Feminine. So you guys are getting all of these beautiful major arcana cards. So the Divine Feminine, I can't speak, I'm getting so excited. Oof. All right, so the Divine Feminine here is manifesting the Divine Masculine or this connection, all right? And may have, you may be dealing with or have in your chart, um, uh, Virgo, Gemini, Taurus, Libra, or again, those fixed signs. Um, there's definitely this communication taking place, even if you aren't in the same, um, even if you guys aren't communicating in the 3D, you definitely are in the astral planes or realms. And for some of you, if you don't know who your divine masculine is, um, you guys are, you guys are linked and you know that. And I feel like you guys are, you know, you're preparing for union or you're definitely reuniting and uniting two souls becoming one in that dream space. And we have the seven of swords in reverse. So we have deception and strategy. There's something becoming very clear here. Um, the divine feminine is moving on from anything that's keeping her. She's recognizing that being anchored in the past is not sort of helping her, um, is not helping her manifest the life, the love, the abundance that she wants. And they're showing me this. Um, I think these are dandelions being sort of blown out, right? And this is manifestation, that seed, all those seeds being planted. So, so much is coming to fruition as the divine feminine takes a good hard look at, you know, what she, you know, she, she's putting her boundaries up, but doing it in this very sort of beautiful, receptive way, if that makes sense. And she's really, she knows what's good for her and what isn't. The Seven of Swords is a card of old crimes. So it's like purging and releasing um, anyone or anything that has sort of done her wrong. Um, and I'm also seeing here with the Seven of Swords, it's like this huge reveal that something is over, that she's not going back to the way things were before um, because it doesn't benefit her. And this is about um, no longer avoiding um, I think her, I think what I'm getting is no longer avoiding her power, her passion, her sexuality, what it is she wants. And she's, she's going after it, but not in, in that, um, not in, in like a passive way. Like she's going after it because she's becoming it. If that makes sense. Oh, I just, this is really powerful stuff here. All right. So with the divine masculine, we have the eight of wands in reverse. So this is interesting because the divine masculine, this 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 fire, this light, this love has been ignited, but I do feel like he's done a runner or he has, you know, dipped or ghosted or just didn't really know what to make of this situation with the eight of wands in reverse. It's about going quiet or going cold, but also recognizing, oh my gosh, what was that? And I feel like this has really shaken up his life, shaken up his you know, he's restructuring his reality or it is in the process of being restructured. 
and we get the page of wands in reverse. Yeah, because you know what? I, I, I'm getting this energy here. The page of wands is somebody who's not prepared, somebody who sort of jumped into something and didn't expect to be met with this divine feminine energy because, wow, divine feminine if you're a Libra or if you're here, you're cross watching or you, whatever it might be, the divine feminine here is out of control, on fire, powerful. I mean, and, and I say that in an absolutely beautiful and, you know, I even kind of want to bow down to the divine feminine here because, <coughs> oh, sorry about that. <coughs> sorry about the distraction, you guys. Sorry about that, you guys. And those of you wearing earphones, I do apologize because that was very shrill and high pitched. That's my dear, that's my dear rescue pup. And she, um, but anyway, where I, where, wherever I was before, I just wanted to express like this deference for the divine feminine. I'm also getting some of my divine feminines. Um, I'm picking up on past life um, connected to Egypt and to being royalty in past life. So some of you guys, you may have had that. Somebody may have said that or you've felt that or you've, you know, you've done this, um, this type of work. And if that resonates with you, it may not resonate with all of you, but um, it's something that I needed to say there. But with the Divine Masculine, I feel like, you know, with this Page of Wands, it may have been this rush in and rush out and sort of going back and saying, holy S-H-I-T, what was that? Am I ready for this? Can I match that energy? But I also feel like the Divine Masculine cannot get the feminine out of his mind. So we do have the Ten of Cups in reverse. So it could be that there was a commitment between you guys. Um, it could also indicate that you guys were married in a past life and in this lifetime that's there's something here about that that needs to be worked out. Um, some of you guys, you may have been in a commitment with this person and during this time of separation, um, you guys aren't speaking and we get the three of cups, but there's definitely a reunion here. There's a celebration, there's a coming together of, you know, building each other up. And just, I want you to take a look at that statue. Look at her energy. That is the divine feminine. I mean, she is the embodiment of all of these three ladies, but this is that carefree energy. I've got this. I'm in my power. And the masculine is really, really picking up on this, but it is triggering some issues here with self-worth and self-confidence that need to be addressed during this time of silence or you know, or after this initial sort of meeting or, you know, very beautiful encounter. All right, let's see what's going on between you. The Knight of Swords, decisive action. So it's funny because I kind of get this energy of the Divine Feminine being so balanced. Um, and, and I was trying to explain what they're, it's like more of a feeling that they're giving me, that the Divine Feminine is, is, is very decisive and is manifesting here with this magician card and being in her true power and closing out a cycle. And that's what's moving everything so quickly forward because she's very decisive. She's seen the light with the seven of swords in reverse. You know, she's, um, you know, and she may be reaching out to the divine masculine or she's just She's just moving forward, but it's like, it's, but it's at the same time. It's funny. It's action, but it's inaction. All right. And so we have the moon in reverse. Yeah. Because illusions, because she's burst through broken past any sort of fears and illusions. And we see that with the seven of swords and the moon card. So strong Pisces or cancer coming out here as well. Um, and I think as a result of the energy that the divine feminine is in, it's sort of helping the masculine through this period of feeling less than confident or feeling confused. Um, it's allowing him, and again, they're showing me this light, this headlight that's on. Um, they're showing me, um, they're showing me that heart light being ignited and turned on. And he's now able to see, you see what he needs to about this connection and how to move towards the feminine. Um, and the moon card is like these very deep feelings. It can be fantasy. It can be romance. Um, but it's also, it's about this enlightenment that's taking place. And again, cause I feel like this initial meeting 
Um, and some of you may have been taken aback because this person, it might have been like really sparks flying. Again, you may not have had a one night stand. You may not have had a relationship. Maybe your eyes just met across the room, um, but there was something, it was like this full body, every nerve recognition of, wow, this is my person. And we see Aries energy coming out. So the shedding of these illusions, um, going through a period of darkness, of confusion, maybe even being under the influence. Just I, I just get this energy of the divine masculine here, you know, sitting there with or without a beer in hand or a glass of whiskey and just sitting there like, almost like he's been hit upside the head. Like, what was that? What do I do with that? How do I get more of that? How do I get closer? And we see the fool, the divine feminine open with open arms, awaiting the masculine, waiting for this new journey, this new adventure, because she's closed out, you know, a very difficult cycle. And we see the six of swords. I love the fact that this came in the reverse because that means that this, this connection is coming back. That means this is that coming back. And I do feel like in the dream space, um, that you guys are preparing for union or reunion here. Um, but the Six of Swords is, again, this, this energy of, I need to get back to whatever that was. I need to feel that way again. I need to get near Divine Feminine's energy. All right, and so we see the Four of Cups. So somebody here is worried that they've missed an opportunity. Um, it could be one, it could be either party here. Maybe worried that they've missed an opportunity. And I feel like more than anything, the Divine Masculine is just, you know, and I don't mean to make the Divine Masculine here. And remember, this is not gender that I'm talking or I'm reading. I'm reading energy. So gender is absolutely not important. But I feel like there's this little, this closed off energy, just trying to figure out what to do, how to move forward. Now, I do feel like the Divine Masculine here may also have been through a difficult breakup or divorce. Um, whether it's with the Divine Feminine or not, it could be with a karmic partner. And again, there's a little bit of a need for patience and holding space um, because there's a lot of passion, but I feel like there's this want or this desire to not repeat any of those past mistakes. All right, so let's get a little bit more information, please. So we get overspends. So I feel like this is what the Divine Feminine is really taking a look at. I mean, it could literally be 3D finances. Um, but more than anything, it's about where does she or where are you um, energetically overreaching or feeling tired or, you know, the Seven of Swords is looking at what may be draining you financially, mentally, physically, spiritually. And, um, you know, and, and closing out that cycle, setting up strong boundaries, okay? And may have experienced a considerable amount of family problems. Um, we could also go back to, you know, having an absent father figure. Um, it doesn't have to be a father. I mean, it could be a mother as well. Um, or a history of relationships that uh, where somebody was always very in and out or didn't show up or wasn't reciprocating. So I do feel like that is something that the Divine Feminine has or is working through. Um, let's go ahead and see what else. We get confident. So this is beautiful because I was picking up on this energy of a lack of confidence. Um, maybe looking at, you know, that we may be dealing with a divine masculine here who hasn't been able to manifest, um, you know, a happy, healthy relationship or is worried about never being able to truly, truly do that. And I feel like as a result of this powerful energy that the divine feminine is in, I feel like it's really pushing the masculine to be better. Okay, wanting to be better for her, for himself. Okay, and again, you might not even know each other. And so this person, you know, is either, you know, I feel like is really in the process of building their confidence. All right, and then we have liar. Interesting. So I don't feel like here we, the divine masculine is a liar, um, but I feel like the divine masculine is looking at mistruths lies. <laughs> That's always a funny word that they give me there. Um, mistruths or lies or misconceptions that he has internalized to believe about himself or to believe about love. And I feel like all of that is shifting as a result of this 
this connection or this knowing or this energetic link. So we also get sophisticated. So somebody here might be quite sophisticated. Um, and I also felt that, you know, it could be also the divine feminine because she's showing up in all of her earthly power. Um, you know, and the divine masculine might also feel like or felt, wow, how do I, how do I do this? How can I do this? You know, am I, because I do feel like there's, there's energy, there's um, a little bit of intimidation here um, or the divine masculine, masculine feeling a little intimidated by his divine feminine because she is so sophisticated and she's just, you know, again, if you're the divine feminine listening to this Libra, like I said, like, I want to, you know, I want to get down on my hands and knees and just sort of exalt you because this energy is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. All right, so we get patience. Everything will unfold in divine timing. Yeah, because this divine feminine that I'm speaking to holds herself in extremely high regard. She knows that she doesn't need to rush or push anything. She's going to continue enjoying this present moment regardless. So we have children. So again, it could be that there are children involved in this connection, but I feel like the divine masculine is looking at up leveling so that he can be in her frequency. And I feel like it's a little bit daunting, you know? And again, this person might mask or cloak that and having a very strong ego um, and may have even, and may have even run because of that. Okay. And the divine feminine, I think a, a previous version of her would have thought maybe I'm not good enough for him. But she is so switched on and so tuned in that she's realizing, well, that's just not the case, <laughs> you know, that he's got some up leveling to do. And I think you can trust your intuition on that one. And then we get unavailable. The, this person is unable to give you all you deserve. So interesting. I feel like that's what the masculine is worried about. And we see that with the page of wands here, um, wanting reunion, wanting to match her energy. Okay, but needing this time, this space, this separation to really figure out again, whoa, what was that? And do I have what it takes to reach this feminine's level? Because like I said, whew, you, the, the feminine that I'm channeling right now, it's like you are Cleopatra status, right? Like you are, you know, queen, queen empress energy. And many of you, you, know, you I, mean, I am picking up on a strong Egyptian past life here for the divine feminine. It doesn't necessarily mean that you were even a woman in a past life, but something about Egypt keeps coming through for me on your side, but that doesn't have to be for all of you. Um, but regardless, you were royalty in your past life and you certainly carry that over into this lifetime. All right. Um, so I'm hearing somebody here, anybody listening to this reading, somebody here might be slumping. So do check your posture. <laughs> Weird message. All right. You turned me on at unexpected times. I told you. So again, there's this sexual energy between you guys. Um, and for many of you, it might be, it might be in the dream space. You could be dealing with a, uh, I was going to say a pantser. <laughs> See, you've even got me all twisted into knots with all this sort of hot and bothered energy. Um, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. And I'm a mess right now. So that's the divine masculine. And with this children energy, you know, with that page of wands in reverse, it's this energy of coming in. You know, I'm not saying or accusing the divine masculine here of being a player, but it's like he's got to get his life in order because it's like he knows that right now he may not be able to or he lacks the confidence and being able to offer her what she truly deserves right which is like a kingdom <laughs> soul contract for higher purpose so absolutely and we get aries leo sag so that could be in your chart or in your or in your person's chart and you are my one baby so it could be during leo season where you see movement or you get communication from this person. Libra, I just want to thank you for letting me be a part of this reading because it feels really good. So for the Divine Feminine, we get Polychrome Jasper. For the Divine Masculine, we get, sh I don't know how to pronounce this. You guys can leave it in the comment box if you know. Um, I say Sheroit, but I I'm probably completely wrong with that. And we get in between you guys, smoky quartz celestial. Mm. 
very nice. All right, so I'm going to be reading from Judy Hall's uh, Crystal Wisdom Healing Oracle. Um, so we have Polychrome Jasper, which is about belonging. Um, Polychrome Jasper is a shaman stone that assists with traveling between worlds, offering protection while you travel, and it helps remember why you are living on Earth. Um, you belong to a greater group, be it a family or clan. And many of you guys, again, there was something in one of your past lives where you ruled over a kingdom or a tribe or a clan. Okay, and it was probably more than once if you ask me. Um, if you feel isolated, reach out to others out of strength rather than neediness. Um, this stone offers you security. For companionship, choose an animal ally and ground your efforts in the practical everyday world. Big changes are coming. Concentrate on practical outcomes. Be down to earth, but pay attention to dreams. Balance your emotional energies and nurture yourself to find joy. Give assistance to others who seek freedom and guard against giving away your power. Yeah, you're not. And you know what? As I was reading this, I was really seeing like a Cleopatra type figure with like guards around her with bodyguards. Like it's, it's this incredible energy I'm getting from the divine feminine. So if you're listening, wow, thank you. Um, now we have the number 50, the wound healing, Sheroit or however it's pronounced. Um, this stone provides deep physical and emotional healing, transmuting negative energy. It converts disease to wellness. And I do feel like the divine masculine, you may be dealing with somebody who's had a number of failed relationships or marriages. Again, a lot of us have, so I'm not throwing any stones here, but it may have created a dis-ease within the body or the energetic system. Um, this stone re-energizes, heals, and integrates dualities, healing past life disease carried into the present life. So I told you, you guys very well could have been married in a past life, and this is what's being healed during this time. Um, it's time to take control for the divine masculine. I feel like this energy, this ignition, this heart light being turned on, he's realizing that. Um, you are undergoing a vibrational change, creating links to higher realities. Again, you guys are meeting in the dream space. And some of you, you may not know who this person is. Um, but you're waking up. I feel like you're like, okay, uh, <laughs> kind of feel like a teenager again. What's going on? Um, Visions of past lives suggest ways to redress karma personally and collectively. So, wow, definitely. I love when we get that kind of synchronicity in a reading. All right, so then we have the Smoky Quartz Celestial Transmutational Magic. And we have the Magician here, Transmutation, Alchemy, you guys. So this is a stone for karmic healing. Smoky Quartz Celestial opens into different dimensions and brings powerful transmutation. You have a powerful survival instinct and ability to go where others dare not. Transmute the past. Realize the darkness is not evil. Facing your deepest fears turns these into golden gifts. Be patient. Much stirs beneath a calm surface, right? And the divine feminine is patient. The masculine is going to be absorbing and picking up on that energy as well. Total transformation is close. It may entail a trip into the underworld. Your shadow becomes your brightest gift. Toxic emotions turn to positive regard. Ground your efforts in the everyday, but retain contact with higher realms. Success comes through dedication and trust in your abilities. Mentors are available. Release yourself from old enchantments. Okay, Libra. Wow. All right, I'm going to leave it here. I'm sending you guys so much love and light. Take care.